The 1980s was a very difficult time for Philippine shipping as the greatest economic crisis since World War II happened. Dozens of shipping companies went bankrupt, including the leading passenger liner operator, Compania Maritima. Because of that, dozens of ships also went to shipbreakers. As the economy recovered at the end of the decade, there was a severe lack of ships, and shipping companies were forced to maximize the passenger capacity of their fleets, often resulting in overloading during peak season. However, in 1988, Sulpicio Lines moved for a grand slam when it acquired three big ferries from Japan, the ferry Sato and ferry Harima from Hankyu Ferry, which became the Nasipit Princess and Kotabato Princess respectively, as well as the much larger ferry Akashia of the Shin Nihonkai Ferry Company, which went on to become the largest and fastest ship in the country at that time, the MV Filipina Princess. What's going on, ship spotters? We are back for another ship feature video. This time, it's all about the MV Filipina Princess, a legendary ship that will forever leave its mark on the Philippine shipping industry. All aboard as we take a look back at the Filipina Princess career, history, and legacy. But first, if you are not yet subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon for more videos like this one. Without further ado, let's get on with the feature. Full speed ahead! This ship started her life as the ferry Akashia, the third in the series of three car ferries originally fielded by the Shin Nihonkai Ferry Company based in Otaru, Hokkaido Prefecture. The ferry Akashia was built by the Kanda Shipbuilding Company. She was 180.5 meters long and 26.4 meters wide with an original gross tonnage of 11,295, a very large ship even for Japanese standards. Her two Mitsubishi Man main engines provided 32,000 horsepower, giving her a maximum speed of 27 knots or 50 kilometers per hour, a speed which was unheard of at that time. She was originally built with a striking design that evokes the feeling of speed. While she was not a particularly tall ship, this low stature made her quite stable in rough waters. Two funnels were located amidships, at the port and starboard sides. A huge structure resembling the funnel of her fleet mate, the Satsuran Maru, was also built towards the forward section of the ship. This false funnel housed a luxurious lounge and restaurant with two stories. During her Japan career, she was remodeled at least once, with additional passenger and cargo spaces added to her aft section. Another design feature that made the ferry Akashia a bit unusual was the large snout, located at the forecastle of the ship, which gave her an aerodynamic look. Leading us to the question of the day, what was the purpose of that snout structure of the ferry Akashia and later Filipina Princess? Was it A, to protect the mooring equipment inside, B, to serve as crew quarters, C, to make her look like a Shinkansen or bullet train? or D, all of the above. The answer for this question will be revealed later in the video, so stay tuned and get a chance to win a special prize. Let's go back to the feature. This ship linked the city of Otaru in Hokkaido to the port of Maizuru in Kyoto, prefecture, and vice versa. However, the return trip included a brief stop at the port of Tsuruga in Fukui prefecture, before proceeding to Otaru. This was one of the first long-distance ferry routes in Japan, a highway in the sea that bypassed the saturated roads of the country at the time. The ferry Akashia was retired from service in 1988 when her replacement, the new Akashia, took over her assigned route. She was sold to the Philippines later that year and was crowned as the new flagship of Sulpicio Lines Incorporated. Now named as the MV Filipina Princess, she arrived in the country amidst much surprise and excitement. Ships of her size were unheard of back then. She was refitted to increase her passenger and cargo capacity. Her weather deck was converted into a passenger deck, while a cargo boom was fitted to her aft section, allowing her to load more containers 
and effectively making her a roll-on lift-off ship. Three passenger gangways and a side cargo ramp was fitted to her starboard side as well. Her original stern ramp remained functional and was mainly used when docked in Manila. The refit increased her gross tonnage to 13,705 and gave her a maximum passenger capacity of 2,960 people. The Filipina Princess also offered an astounding nine types of accommodation on board. Economy Class, Economy Deluxe, Tourist, Special Tourist, Tourist Deluxe, Cabins for Two, Cabins for Four People, and several suites. There was also an extravagant owner suite, which was not available for regular passengers. It was exclusive for the use of the owners and other VVIPs. Those were the days. Speaking of VVIPs, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite all of our viewers to help us create more informative content by joining our membership program. This will help us create more educational and informative shift videos like this one. Additional perks and cool rewards await you. Click the join button to know more. Going back with a fun fact. Only two ships beat the Filipino princess in terms of passenger capacity, and both of them were her future fleetmates. These ships were the MV Princess of Paradise and MV Princess of the Universe of Sulpicio Lines. Both of these ships were able to carry over 3,000 passengers at any given time. As the company flagship, the Filipina princess was assigned to the premier Manila Cebu Manila route. Her superior speed left the competition eating dust, as she was able to complete a voyage in only 18 hours. Isn't that amazing? With the Filipino princess now sailing, Sulpicio Lines finally broke the stalemate with longtime rival William Lines, who responded by fielding their next flagship, the equally venerable MV Sugbu. The ensuing battle royale between these two flagships was the spark that ignited the great liner wars of the 1990s and was a favorite topic among local maritime circles. By the way, we also have a feature about William Lyne's MV Sugbu, so please check it out. In 1993, she surrendered her crown to the new flagship of Sulpicio Lines, the larger and grander MV Princess of the Orient. The MV Filipina Princess was reassigned to the once-a-week Manila Dava route via Cebu and Surigao. This assignment took her to the country's eastern seaboard, which is notorious for its rough seas. However, her size and pedigree as a long-distance ferry traversing the Sea of Japan made the Filipina Princess a stable ship, even in extreme conditions, and proved invaluable in maintaining the comfort and safety of those who sailed aboard her. Her regular schedule on this route starts every Sunday when she leaves Manila at 10 a.m. and arrives at Cebu at Monday, 7 a.m. The Filipina princess then proceeds to Surigao, departing at 11 a.m. with a 6 p.m. arrival in Surigao. She departs for her Surigao Davao leg at 11 p.m. the same day and arrives in Davao every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Her arrival in Davao was said to be a sight to behold, with beachgoers in the resorts dotting the Samal coast marveling in awe as the massive ship navigated the narrowest point in the Pakaputan Strait. The Filipina princess never left the Davao route until she was suspended along with the rest of the Sulpicio Lines fleet in the wake of the Princess of the Stars disaster. She was laid up at Mactan Channel with the other Sulpicio ships, eagerly awaiting for the next chance to sail. She was even painted with the infamous final livery of Sulpicio Lines. As time went by, the light at the end of the tunnel became dimmer for the Filipina princess. She was transferred to the Sulpicio Lines wharf in Mandawe and awaited her final fate. When Sulpicio Lines became the Philippine Span Asia Carrier Corporation, the Filipina princess funnel was painted with a new logo sparking new hope that her owners were still holding on to her. But alas, the Filipina princess' time was already at hand. One night in August 2011, she quietly slipped out of her berth in Mandawe 
and began a two-week voyage to the scrappers in Alang. No one saw her go, save maybe for those who worked in the docks during that time. But in a stroke of extreme luck, a ship spotter who is also a mariner was able to see the Filipina princess for the last time near the Malacca Strait as she was being towed to her final resting place as a mere barge. This is the last photo of the MV Filipina Princess, a great ship that gave a lot of life to the Philippine shipping industry. A ship where many stories began, a testament to Sulpicio Line's desire to become the best, and a monument to their untimely demise. How about you? What's your Filipina Princess story? Share them in the comments down below. By the way, remember our question earlier? What was really the purpose of the ship's snout structure? The choices were A. To protect the mooring equipment inside B. To serve as crew quarters C. To make her look like a Shinkansen or bullet train and D. All of the above And the answer is D. All of the above The ferry Akashia and her Shinihonkai fleetmates were often referred to as the Umi no Shinkansen, the Shinkansen of the sea. Their distinctive snouts, combined with their faster than average service speeds, gave them close resemblance to the Shinkansen, or bullet trains of Japan. The snouts also doubled as protection against the extreme conditions in the Sea of Japan, especially during the winter. As the Filipino princess, it also housed additional crew accommodations. According to some stories, this area of the ship was notoriously uncomfortable, especially during hot days at port, and only becomes bearable when the ship is underway. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the Filipina princess today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on our next video.